Sure. Uh, my name is Jesse Tolkien, and uh, right now I'm the campaign director for the Campus Climate Challenge, uh, which is a campaign of the Energy Action Coalition. Uh, but really what I do is that I am an organizer, and my area of expertise is going out and organizing young people all over the country to take full advantage of their political and grassroots power. I think the most important thing when it comes to grassroots organizing and what I think of is the idea of using the full creativity and power of all of the people on the ground all over the place. So as opposed to a top-down strategy where there are a few people in a room that kind of dictate what everyone else in the country or the world is going to do, grassroots is where you have all sorts of ideas and strategies and experiences from the, the very ground, ground level coming up together to, to really build a strategy to make change. Well, I would start off by saying that really one of the most exciting attributes of grassroots organizing is the process of recruiting volunteers. Uh, I think most people who kind of rise to the ranks and become full-time organizers can remember that very first time that they were recruited to, as a volunteer. And, and many times those exper experiences are life-changing. Um, so it's to be excited about the opportunity because it's a very powerful thing. Uh, when it comes to recruitment and recruiting volunteers, I think uh, you need to cast a very wide net. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is they start profiling people. And they think, oh, you know, that person doesn't look like someone that might be interested in my issue. Or, you know, they look like they might be angry if I ask them. There is no harm in asking. And so I really try to apply, you know, the motto of ask everyone and literally ask everyone whether you are standing on a street corner and that is going to be your method of recruiting volunteers you should ask everybody that walks by not just the people that look comfortable to ask uh, if you are on a college campus you shouldn't just go to student organizations where you think you agree with their issue you should ask everyone you never know who might bite uh, in your community it's the same type of thing you should ask young people and old people you should ask families and single people, uh, the idea is you cast the widest net and you're giving at least people the opportunity to make the decision for themselves about whether or not they may be interested in helping you. And uh, it's, it's about asking everyone and then having a really sincere ask and a tangible ask. Uh, you have to ask people to actually do something. Most likely people will say no if they're confused about what you're asking them to do. So ask everyone have something specific to ask them to do, and uh, of course, create a personal contact with the person as well. I think that's a great question. Um, I think the first thing to think about in terms of tools are that you don't need to recreate the wheel when it comes to recruitment. And so that one of the tools is utilizing existing networks that are in place. So. I would say that one of my favorite tools are the meetings that are already happening uh, in your community or on your campus or whatever setting you might be trying to recruit volunteers. I, I love just showing up at meetings and introducing myself and my cause and then making a pitch for volunteers at that point. Uh, that structure is already happening. The legwork is, is already in place for people to get there. So, so really utilize you know, existing meetings and infrastructure. Um, I think you always want to have some kind of action that people can take as a means of signing up to volunteer. So either utilizing a petition, if a petition is pertinent to the type of work that you're doing, or some kind of interest card. By making a volunteer take some course of action to sign up and, and maybe talk about or write about the things that they're interested in doing or pledge their support, you're getting them to make more of a solid commitment. And then they're starting to connect for themselves, okay, here's an issue I care about. I actually do have some time. You know, they're asking me when I have time. I do have time to make this happen. Uh, so I definitely think a petition and or interest card is very helpful. Um, and then you need to think, be creative about how you solicit uh, for volunteers and actually do the recruitment. So uh, to isolate yourself to one means of, of recruiting people, I think will limit your ultimate pool of people that you end up with. So. Recruit people on the phone, you know, get lists from people and, and do cold calls and introduce yourself and find out who 
already exists as activists, ask them for suggestions. So do it on the phone. Do email. Email's great, but email alone will never get you the pool of people you need. So email with phone works. Um, and then, of course, the very best kind of recruitment is just any opportunity that you have to do person-to-person -person recruitment. So whether you can go into businesses or meetings that are already happening, go to college campuses, or, of course, you know, when you have absolutely nothing at all, uh, I have seen absolute wonders happen in terms of going out on the street and trying to recruit people for a campaign or an issue that's really important. Well, wow, there's a lot to know as an organizer leading a recruitment drive. Um, I think you need to be very clear about what you actually need in terms of recruitment goals. So the first step is to set those recruitment goals. I am a huge fan of the rule of halves when it comes to organizing and recruitment. And so in my experience as an organizer and then training other organizers, before we even go out there to implement the strategy, it's how many people do I need to make this happen or to make my organization successful. And if I need 25 people, well, then I better get 50 people that are going to tell me that they're going to come out and volunteer. That means that I'm going to have to ask at least 100 because only half of them are going to say yes and, uh, and, and kind of the rule of halves from, from there, out, there and up. So just very important to know what you're looking for. Um, the other type of thing that I think is important in training organizers on a large recruitment drive is to really to have a plan and to work backwards from that plan. So if you need 25 volunteers tomorrow to go out and make your event really successful, it's important that you've started the appropriate amount of time out from that and really worked backwards to ensure that you're giving yourself the appropriate amount of time and, and not putting yourself in a position where you're, you know, you're struggling at the very last minute to go out and find those 25 people. You want to have quality people volunteering for you. And by aiming really high and getting way more people than you need, You'll, you'll really be in a position as an organizer to put your volunteers in a position to be successful and to put volunteers in positions that make them happy and make them want to continue being a part of your organization. Um, and then I think be very creative. Uh, when we look out there at kind of the landscape right now of organizations that are and individuals that are out there trying to recruit, I think we see some of the same techniques used over and over again. You know, somebody fills out a form and at the end, would you like to volunteer? We got we to gotta be creative and you have to figure out a way for your organization or issue to really stand out. So, you know, whether it's planting yourself in the middle of a discussion group and, and raising your hand and making your volunteer pitch there, or whether it's finding creative ways to do online or viral kind of marketing as a means of recruitment, just to be creative and kind of step out of the box.